Hey, okay guys, we are here. This is for our 6x6 mini album that we're going to be working on. Um, this is all of what you're going to need. Maybe a few extra things if it depends on how you want your pages to turn out. I'm going to be using a scoreboard, a paper trimmer, and of course some scissors, a pencil, my um, distress ink. I, I like to use, um, this one is called Black Soot by Tim Holtz. It's a Ranger product. And um, I love that one. Then I'm going to be using this foil uh, paper. I like to use this on the front and back cover. This is made by Cricut. Um, then <laughs> my my puppy is going to be talking. Uh, then I'm going to be using these punches. This one here I use to create circles um, so that I have pull tabs. I don't have one on this book here, but let me see if I can show you. I'll show you what it looks like. This is the last book we made. Um, this is the foil paper here, and these are the pull tabs, and it's just a black cardstock that I punch out with this, and then I put the um, bronze embellishment on there, and you can use whatever embellishment you like. So that's that, what that looks like. Uh, so that one, you may or may not want to use. You can use square. I like the circle. Then this one is a... Fisker's Trim Border Punch. This one is a Stampin' Up! Border Punch. And then this is a Martha Stewart Border Punch. And then this is a Martha Stewart Corner Punch. I love this Corner Punch. And then this is a Fisker's Round Quarter Punch. Um, the paper we're going to be using this time around is by Color... Colorbach. <clears throat> That's the name of it right there. And uh, let's see here. It's mm, it says it's called fresh linen. <laughs> um, I don't know. It doesn't really look like fresh linen to me. It's really it's pretty though. It's very beautiful paper, and it's got a lot of cutouts in it. So I'm going to look, I look forward to using those. This is an alphabet one. Um, so it comes with a few card stock. I think that like three or four card stock. And then the rest is paper. And it's just beautiful paper. I got it off of Amazon for $5. I think you can also find these at Walmart. Sometimes they're five, sometimes they're ten. So check your pricing on that. Again, it's fresh linen. It's 26 uh, sheets, and then they say 129 cutouts. <coughs> Excuse me. Then you're going to need quick dry tacky glue, or a quick dry liquid glue, whatever one you uh, want to use. You're also going to need half inch score tape and then a quarter inch score tape. Um, on this album I'm not going to be using my Xyron. I'm going to go back to using my tape because I really have more tape than I do Xyron stickers. All right now we are down to the dies that I'm going to be using. This die set are called um, Pretty Pockets. They are made by Anna Griffin this is what this pocket looks like and it cuts out just perfectly like a pocket gives you these folding lines and then you just uh, glue it down and it's a pocket so I'm going to be using those and I have four different kinds and I got these off of HSN so I look forward to using those very pretty then I'm going to be using this Spellbinder edge die and this one in particular, um, I don't know what number it is, 
because it doesn't say. I mean, this the number of the pack you get is S five two one five, but you get uh three. You get six dies in there, and I'm using the plain die. And then I'm using this spellbinder die. Again, you get uh, let's see three. Six. You get seven in this one, and I'm using the plain small one, which is S5214. So those are the dies we're going to be using for this particular 6x6 um, six six album, which I cannot wait. And I am going to be using <clears throat> all of these punches. Um, if I have forgotten anything, please let me know. You're going to need a squishy to break your tape with. You are going to need a ruler. And hey, dude, um, this is if you're recording, here. you're going to need a stylus. And we are on our brand new 6x6 uh, mini album. I have gotten the front cover and the back cover here. And I went on ahead and did the um, six page inserts. This is... Uh, it's six inserts creating 12 pages front and back and then you have 13 and 14 if you count your inside cover and your inside back cover so I just thought I'd go ahead and finish taping around my edges and if you are not familiar with taping around your edges to get your paper down one of the things you want to be careful of is not getting the tape on the crease that that's going to fold over you don't want the tape down inside of here you just you want it right above there let's finish this little piece up and then I'll work on the insert pages And with your pages, you can create your pages before you put them down on your binding, or you can create them when they're attached to the binding. So it's, it's really up to you. As you can see, I put my binding on before I put my base my big page down um, and I just go in with my handy dandy Zacto knife and I pull this over and this is right up against the card stock or not card stock but um, chipboard and I'll show you the chipboard I'm using So this chipboard is black medium weight and you get 25 sheets and I got it off of uh, Amazon and it wasn't really pricey uh, they're 12 by 12 sheets really heavy I got it in like two days that was really fast shipping um, it was easy to cut on my here's a six by six piece here and it was easy to cut on my um cutter i have a fiskars cutter sorry about the shaking <laughs> this cutter here and what i did is i cut one side then i flipped it over and then cut the other side so that it just easily snapped away and gave me straight lines. So you could do that as well. Or use whatever book board you have. So it's up to you. Anyway, so I'm taking my X-Acto knife and I'm just pressing down firmly and then keeping it up against the chipboard and cutting off that little piece 
I just find this easier than to put the uh, binding in. There we go. After. So it's still nice and flush, and I still get a great book out of it. And that's just that little piece there. And then these are going to fold down like so. I'm going to cut this one off. Like so. See, that was easier. <laughs> And I have to put my tape on. I did use Tyvek this time. And I'm hoping that the Tyvek is as good as the Hype is. Um, Tyvek is the material that they use on houses to keep out moisture. Um, and they also use it in mailers to keep out moisture. So... Uh, this old mailer was a priority mail um, envelope, but if you look closely, you could see that it's got like all these crisscross um, grains in it, not grains, but lines, and uh, it's very durable and waterproof, so... If you're at work and you see a bunch of uh, envelopes in the in the recycle, just pick them up, cut off the name and address of it if there's any on there, and um, use the rest for making your mini albums. Now you can also buy it at the hardware store, like Lowe's and Home Depot, because like I said, they use it for waterproofing houses. And I put my Tyvek through my um, Xyron machine, and you can do the same if you have one, to make it sticky on both sides, so that when I took the backing off of one side, um, the other side was sticky as well, and I could use it to put down um, my paper and And that. <laughs> and this. <laughs> and that. So, let me, I just ripped into this piece here. So, let me just put some glue down there. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take off my backing and press these down. work on all my sides here. Oh, good job. Now you can fast forward right through this part. You don't have to watch me take off the tape backing. Um, but this is just a part of showing you how I do it and the tools I use to do it with.
you got to press firmly uh, because you're what you're doing is you're thickening up the entire um, book when you're adding paper as base pages or as base paper and uh, the more paper you add to it of course the heavier it's going to get it's another reason why I wanted to try the Tyvek because they say it's uh, nice and can handle the weight of paper This hidden hinge is, I'll give you the recipe for making a hidden hinge. So what you want to do when you're working in a, this is for a 6x6 album. Um, you'll have to adjust the measurements for anything longer or shorter. So for instance, a 6x6 album is going to be 12 inches long. So your hidden hinge, um, let's see, plus three inches because you have your bind, your um, spine rather. So I have the spine at three inches and I have the sides and the front and back at six inches. So now, let's see, I don't have it um, where it's bending just yet. But anyway, uh, my point is, <clears throat> let's just get this bent. Okay, so anywho. Your hidden hinge, if it's three inches, you can have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve hinges. It's up to you. I always use six. Six is a great number because twelve front and back covers can be very heavy. Um, I have this book out. This is a heavy book, and all of the work we did in it is all paper of course uh, but it's heavy so you really don't want to get any heavier than what a six by six can give you with six pages um, so for a six pages hinge um, you what you want to do is the page length um, is 11 and a quarter so you'll take this eight and a half by 11 and where am I at? And you'll cut it down to size. So for instance, well actually you don't cut it down to size. Um, I take two sheets of eight and a half by 11 and I glue them together tip to tip. Then what I do cut down to size is, let me get a white piece of paper for you. Here. So you see the book part here. I want my hinge just to be like an eighth of an inch from the top and the bottom. So I'll take these two sheets and then I'll mark here that one eighth of an inch and then I'll cut it. I'll cut this one real quick. I can use it for something else though. No waste of paper. And we're pretending like this is two sheets that are this long. Then you'll take your um, scoreboard and you'll go in two inches right off the top. That's two inches. Two inches is going to lay to the side here. And it's going to connect the hidden hinge to the front and the back. Because um, you're going to have two inches left over when you're done scoring. So now that we are at our two inch mark, now 
we want to come in at one half inch twice so one half inch one half inch and then a quarter of an inch so this is one half one half and then one quarter then you can move it if you want put it back on a regular number instead of having to count one two three four <laughs> and you'll go in one half one half and then one quarter and you'll do that all the way down until you have six hinges and how to tell if you have six hinges or not is this one half and this one half that equals one hinge so you'll count or you can number them one two and then three four five six and then that way you have your six hinges then you'll go in and you'll you'll fold on your score lines and create your hinge there's your hinge I'm just gonna fold on the score line once I've done that I'll I'll fold each hinge, not the quarter, each hinge, all the way down. So I have all of them scored or folded on their score line. Then I'll come back, I'll put in my tape. You only need a piece of tape for one side to hook to this piece. Here, I'll do it real quick. This one's almost gone, so we can use it. There. All right. Then I'll fold that. But I've already uh, folded each score, so it makes it so much easier when you come back in with your tape just to pick up your sheet here and then bend it because you've already scored it or I've already um, folded it. So the bend's already there. And then you have your hinge. There it is. And the next one's ready to go. So you'll just put on your tape. Take the backing off. We've already folded it, so all I have to do is fold it where we folded it before, and I have my next hinge. Voila! And you see where the quarter mark is? Just fold it. And you have two hinges, which is really great because that's what you, you need, plus four more. <laughs> But that's how quick and easy it is to do a, a hidden hinge. Alrighty. So, in lieu of all that, um, I now have to have a piece to cover all of this that's inside. So I've got all of this here. Now I can go in with black cardstock, like I did for the front and back cover here. And, um, or I can uh, use paper, but I think I want to go with using my scraps. I have bunches and bunches of scraps, and if you have scraps too, whether it's black cardstock or some other paper, uh, try that. So I'm just going to try and find a couple of pieces in my scraps that may fit. Look at that, that one fits. And that one fits. Yay. So that's cool. Let me cut this to lay straight here. Because I don't want to go on to my score line. So let's just cut that like so. I'm going to pull out just a little bit. I'm going to mark it there. Cut that little piece off. Okay, 
So this piece is too small. How did I end up too small? Don't you hate when that happens? All right, so let's go here to here. I must have been measuring the wrong piece. Okay, that's better. So that piece is going to go there. This piece is going to go up to the score line, about right there. Then I'm going to cut it so it's not too thick on this end, uh, right here. is going to go here. Then we have this piece here. Let's cut that off. This is going to go here, this one, up to the score line, like so. Cut it right there. So now I've got my cover up here. I'm going to run these through the Zyron, put them on, and I'll be right back to work on the first page. All right, guys, so we're back and we're gonna work on that first page. So here are the measurements. You need a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. <clears throat> you can use eight and a half by 11 and I'll give you the measurements for that in just a second. Right now, we're gonna use a 12 by 12 and that's gonna give us two base pages. So I'm just gonna cut it at six inches and you see I have my six here. And because this is a 12 by 12, now you have a six by six on this side and a six by six on this side. So the base page is six by six. You just wanna fold it in half. I like to score it uh, because I fold, you know, crumb, crummy. I, I do crummy folds. So I wanna score it here at six inches. And that's our first page. And then I'm going to go ahead and score this one because it's sitting here. And it's going to get used too. Okay. I'll put that to the side. Now. Now what you want to do is take, open it up, take your quarter inch score tape and put a line across the bottom here. Take your squishy or a pair of scissors, 
cut that down press it down remove the backing of the tape grab your book and remove the backing of one side of your hinge when you put this on here you, you want to make sure not to get it um, too close to the score line in here because it's you want it to go back and forth smoothly so just bring your paper up a little bit like a sixteenth of an inch and make sure that this is level with the bottom of the book and then press down give it a good press remove the backing of the next tape fold this over and let that just evenly press down just let it fall into place press it down on the bottom and you have your page plus you have a pocket all right so that's how you make your pages so get all six of those done and then we'll see you on the next video and we'll get to working on slips and pockets and flaps and all kinds of good stuff all right bye